Yo, what's up guys, this is Yusuf here, back with a brand new video on the channel and today I'm going to be taking you guys over a PC build guide for $800. That is going to get you the best bang for your buck performance and also crush all the modern AAA titles in 1440p. So if you're in the market, you have $800 in your pocket and you're looking for a solid gaming PC that's not going to break the bank as well as get you future-proof performance and also have a lot of upgrade path. And if you are looking for such a build, this is the right place for you. So drop this video a big thumbs up, get subscribed to TechDroid and all the parts that I talk about in this video will be linked to Amazon US in the description down below. So check them out, buy from those and they happen to be affiliate links. So if you do buy from those, it helps the channel out and in turn helps me make more videos. So with that being said, let's get to the performance and the parts that make it all possible. In terms of performance, as I said, this will be kicking ass in terms of 1440p gaming. So modern AAA titles, GTA 5, Witcher 3, Battlefield 1 and all the games that I don't remember will run 1440p medium to max settings. So you'll be able to get 60fps or more by turning down those textures, that detail levels a little low. But if you're playing at 1080p, have no problem with that. Full HD gaming is a standard for this PC, so medium to max settings, well over 60 FPS or some cases 100 FPS and you'll be able to put that detail levels way up there and get that best quality. And also if you're talking about those older games that don't require a lot of power, CSGO, Minecraft, League of Legends, Dota 2, World of Warcraft, those games will be a breeze for this PC as it'll be able to play them at 100 FPS or more at 1440p or 1080p. Nonetheless. The performance is great. You can also do video editing, live streaming, photo editing, content creation. All this is possible on this build. But with that being said, let's get to the parts that make it all possible. So in terms of the CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 1400. So this is a quad-core CPU, four threads, comes with its own Wraith Stealth cooler. So overclockable, unlocked, you don't require an external cooler. For $159, this is packing some really good performance. 3.4 GHz base clock, but you can overclock this to 4 GHz, no problem. You also get 10 MB of total cache. Works on the AM4 socket type, so in the future, if you feel the performance is not up to the mark, upgrading to a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7 is not a bad idea. And also, that price, $159, is kind of justified by the performance you get. This is going to kick all the gaming titles and also multi-threaded performance on Ryzen chips is really good. So for $159, this is really good value for money. To house that, we have the MSI B350M Gaming Pro motherboard. So again, I've chosen a motherboard that nails all the essentials. For $69, you're getting HDMI, DDR4, aim for socket type with overclocking support. So you can you know upgrade to Ryzen 5 or go up to Ryzen 7 and still get really good performance. And this also happens to have all the fundamentals. USB 3.1, M.2, HDMI, DDR4, all those good stuff. And also it's VR ready. So you can kick in some Oculus Rift or HTC Vive action if you want to. But yeah, for $69, it does the job. Now for memory, we have 8 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics Sport LT. So 8 gigabytes clocked at 2666 MHz is more than what you need in 2017 for gaming. But I highly recommend going up to 16 gigabytes to get the true potential of this PC. Ryzen can harness all that goodness when you get 16 gigabytes. So yep, get 16 gigabytes if you want to do editing and live streaming and still play and record games at the same time. So yeah. 16 gigabytes is what I recommend, but 8 gigabytes is what fits into our budget. For 64 bucks, it does the job. Now for storage, we have the 2 terabyte hard drive from Seagate, 64 megabytes of cache, 3.5 inch form factor, 7200RP. For $66, this is doing the job and what else can you ask for? Now this PC also happens to have a SSD and that is the ADATA SU800. 128GB of you know storage, high speed storage I should say, 560 megabytes plus read and writes. For only 55 bucks, you're getting a SSD that's gonna make the performance of this PC significantly better. I suggest putting on your operating system and also some of the games and the softwares that you want to run really fast and want you know better performance on. The SSD will do the job for 55 bucks. This is really good value for money. And if you want, you can upgrade to 250 gigabytes if that is something that you require. If you have bigger files that you want to store, a SSD is always going to help. Now to power this whole build up, we have the Corsair VS600. So this is a 600 watt power supply with an 80 plus white you know, certification. And this also comes with a three year warranty. So $49 for a 600 watt power supply is not bad. The EVGA ones are currently very overpriced and I don't think they offer the best value. So 600 watts of power should be more than enough. And you also have a lot of headroom for future upgrades to Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7, or also you can upgrade storage, RAM, and also upgrade to a beefier graphics card. But yeah, that's something of the future. But for now, this will do the job for $49. 
Now for the graphics card and the start of the show, we have the PNY GeForce GDX 1060. So 6GB of GDDR5 memory, 1508 on the base and 1708 on the boost. You have, you know, dual fan design for only $289, you're getting a lot. So three display ports, one HDMI and one DVI. You have all the connectivity, you have all the performance and you have all the looks from PNY. And $289 is kind of steep, but again, this is the cheapest 1066 gigabyte you can find on Amazon. So I did a great job finding one. And that kind of wraps up the GPU. Now to pack this whole build up, find me a more minimal case than this. We have gone with the Corsair Carbide Series 270R, so mid tower ATX case, and it also has a solid side panel, so no clear side, but for $59, you cannot ask for a more minimal looking case. Front panel IO is there, a lot of space inside, looks clean AF and does the job. It's got the space for, you know, liquid cooling and also beefier graphics card than what we are using, ATX motherboard support, and all the drive base and expansion slots you can ask. So overall, this is a pretty good case and does the job for this build. And that kind of wraps it up guys. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Give this video a massive thumbs up and also drop all your opinions down below in the comment section. And I love to you know hear from you guys and also will be replying to everything you ask or talk about. So that's been it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. By the way, don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna be pumping out more PC builds like these.